so if you talk about a mallet finger so overall uh, when you talk about extensor tendon injuries the the tendon is flat it is subcutaneous and the core suture which we take for uh, flexor tendon is not possible in, in the at least up to zone 5 uh, so the repairs are weak and zones 1 to 4 repairs are not usually amenable to early motion protocols and that makes it really difficult to treat extensor tendon injuries so when we uh, uh, measure the outcomes of the extensor tendon repair the loss of digital flexion may be greater than the residual loss of extension and it's very important because if you mismanage you will lose a flexion and uh, normally we should get extension lag but you get a flexion loss also so the millers has uh, cl uh, classified this into criteria the excellent and good the excellent is when there is no extension lag and no flexion loss whereas good is less than 10% of the extension lag and more than 20% of the flexion loss so if you see the mechanism of mallet injury it is the drop finger what we call and it's because basically because of forceful hyperflexion of the distal phalanx usually we get because of the cricket injuries and some of them because of the volleyball and basketball so as shown in the diagram below the disruption of the extensor tendon mechanism at the dip joint it may be associated with fracture of the articular surface or may not be associated with but the unopposed pull of the flexor tendon will lead to a drop finger and if you don't treat the mallet injury obviously it will a chronic mallet injury it will lead to a schwannic deformity and then it becomes disabling for the patient for use of the hand the doyle has classified the mallet finger we all of us know it type 1 and type 4 are close injuries while type 2 and type 3 are the open injuries i will not talk about it in detail but what we follow is a meticulous examination and evaluation of the patient and then follow the appropriate treatment because unless the we don't follow the appropriate treatment the patient will have a deformity later on so type 1 is a close injury with or without small avulsion fracture of the distal phalanx so uh, i i talked about the mechanism of injury and what treatment protocol we follow is we splint them in 6 weeks in a mallet finger splint and then after 6 weeks we ask them to remove off and on while working it may be allowed but continuously splinted in the night and uh, again after that night splintage for further four weeks day time they can keep the splint away so totally 14 weeks a uh, supervised treatment is required and i always find it patients who meticulously follow the uh, treatment they get a good result whereas those patients who drop out from the supervised treatment usually they have a poor results so this was 24 year old male with cricket ball injury on 19 march 2013 and left finger finger mallet no evidence of fracture on x ray so this is what we use a splint uh, no, no, normally the commercially available splints like this usually they don't fit in very well and whenever patient comes if we ask for this uh, splint they are not available in appropriate size i find another problem with the uh, frog splint uh, because it leads to maceration of the skin and uh, uh, the skin problems on the dorsum so we customize the splint like this and uh, we call them every week and supervise it and i find it really useful because uh, the appropriate angle can be given whatever you require for the extension of the dip joint and this is his post of follow up at 5 years you can see there is small little bit of flexion loss and this is his video so there is no extensor lag but there is flexion loss but which is less than 20 degree in fact 10 degree and uh, he got a excellent result so if you follow the treatment meticulously and if patient is really sincere they get a good result type 2 injury is a open injury with laceration of the tendon and many authors describe this to suture skin and tendon together but i am really afraid to put skin and tendon suture together uh, because of the conditions in which our patients are and uh, i i tried to do it in one or two patients but uh, both patients i had a problem of infection so i don't do that so what i do is uh, open them and repair them so this was a mixer injury which was uh, already treated by somebody just by dressing and there was a wound so we opened it 
did the repair here sometimes uh, you can take uh, zigzag sutures but i take the uh, two mattress suture in this particular case with uh, pfizer ethylon and then close the skin this was march 2012 and uh, in some patients uh, if i am operating them uh, already given local anesthesia then i prefer to put axial k wire for four weeks uh, you may find tough uh, in some patient because uh, one patient we had infection because of such care wire and this patient led to osteomyelitis of the dip joint but uh, overall we are quite happy with that and then after removal of care wire we asked them to splint for uh, next 6 weeks intermittently like i told for the conservative treatment and this is 6 year post of uh, photograph and uh, i asked this patient a video from her house she sent me Uh, video is not very appropriate, but you can see there is no extensor lag, but there is little bit of flexion loss. What is it? Type three injuries is open injury with loss of skin and tendon substance. And if there is uh, loss of uh, skin and tendon, then you need to put a tendon graft and a flap cover with DIP joint immobilization. But I, I have not, I have never dared to put a small tendon graft there and cover it with the flap also. So my preferred treatment for such patients is DIP orthodesis. obviously there are uh, many devastating injuries like this uh, 45 year old lady, uh, lady who had a mixer injury on uh, 20909 09, and uh, uh, the bone was also damaged the joint was destroyed so simply doing orthodesis and covering with transposition flap i think solves the problem and this is a 3 years post of photographs you can see there is a good flexion and good extension Uh, but the dip are orthodes but she is very happy with this result when we uh, come to type 4 mallet fracture i have no, no experience in treating prior uh, trans epiphyseal fractures in children so i didn't get any but uh, the type b is hyperflexion injury with intraarticular fracture 20 to 50% and more than 50% of the articular surface is a type c injury so type 4 it requires open treatment and my method of fixation is a uh, either a screw fixation k wire or a extension block pinning if it is a small fragment i have managed to do it conservatively also so hyperflexion injury with intraarticular fracture you can see a small fracture fragment after cricket ball injury that was in september 12 and this uh, the, i just repaired the extensor tendon because it was completely disinserted with a small fragment of bone we just repaired the extensor tendon with soft tissues and immobilized with k wire and this is a 6 year post op result you can see scar on the dip joint he has a good flexion also and good extension also you can see this post operative video of the 6 years and uh, type c injuries uh, where hyperflexion injury with more than 50% of the articular surface this was a ring finger uh, mallet usually this patient don't present to me immediately on day 1 hardly they come on day 1 usually they come uh, around 2 weeks to 3 weeks when actually the mallet finger becomes more apparent because of the top finger this was injury in may 2015 and uh, date of surgery was 16th may and you can find a small screw as well i have immobilized it with the k wire and this is a 3 years post op you can see little bit of extensor lag in this patient so uh, recurrence of a surgery uh, many times if you uh, fail in the surgery after extensor tendon repair or even after the fracture fragment uh, but we had no complications related to splint because we use a customized splint this was a patient with cricket ball injury and he had a, this small fragment so i thought it will because it was fragmented i thought it will not be better to put a screw into this because it may just uh, fragment further so i i did intraosseous wire i'll show the x ray and immobilize it with k wire but then when we removed the k wire it dropped again so obviously the intraarticular uh, intraosseous wire didn't remain but after looking at the x ray what i did was uh, just immobilize it this was the initial x ray and then again immobilized it a splint and this patient was really very sincere and he followed up very well and we had a good result uh, this was june 13 and you can see this x ray the bone is united the space in the joint is also good 
You can see a digitally migrated uh, intraoceous wire, but this is a post op, uh, five years post op uh, view. You can see there is small little bit of deformity in the nail, and this is one of the complication of the mallet finger surgery. And you can see five years post op video. There is no extensor lag or there is no flexion loss. So, but our preferred method today is external block pinning because I, I find it less invasive. And uh, this was a patient with cricket ball injury. And uh, you can see a small fragment out there on the dorsum. So, this is the type of external block pinning what we use. Uh, you have to take care that your pin should not go into the uh, substance of the flexor tendon, otherwise you get adhesion there and then there will be significant flexion loss. So this was the eight months post-op photograph, you can see little bit of flexion loss, but he has a good flexion, good fist and good extension, no extensor lag. So uh, we have good to excellent results in almost all the patients except the complications, but they were also treated well. The extensor lag is less than 10 degrees and the loss of flexion is less than 10 degrees in almost all the patients. So if you meticulously choose patients and uh, clinically evaluate them and treat with the proper protocol, I think all of them, they should get a good result. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.